focus data for good. The world is now in a very fragile situation. Climate change is a threat to everyone. The evolution of digital technologies in, is now in every aspect of our economies and lives and is delivering huge benefits to our society. But it is also creating genuine risks to our democracies and generating new inequalities as well as new form of exclusion. The constant struggle of women and minorities um, across the world is a stark reminder of how unfair our world still is. And myself, I come from the most unequal continent on earth, where we still face several problems in terms of government, economy and society. But most of our challenges are also global. And to some degree, we all think in this forum that if we just had the right data, if we just uh, were able to understand the situation better, we could collaborate and eventually solve it. And, you know, this is part of the truth, but maybe there's a bit of unpacking uh, to this. Ten years ago, I was uh, part of a generation that um, heard the call of Sir Tim Berners-Lee and uh, the inventor of the World Wide Web uh, in order to uh, deliver uh, the data revolution, to open data now. And for many of us who were actually born and raised with internet technologies in the developing world, uh, which is, you know, a huge privilege, um, we heard the call, and it was a call for arms. And overnight, um, data enthusiasts, developers, activists, academics, government officials were actually demanding and opening data with revolutionary fervor. And while the movement initially started in the global north, it only took a few months to have a global movement also in the global south. As part of this global effort, uh, we even set up the International Open Data Charter, establishing guiding principles to use data for development. We also establish um, the uh, Open Data for Development Network and more than 80 countries gather around the uh, Open Government Partnership um, were uh, able to set up open data policies and commit to uh, releasing valuable data sets. So in short, these were really um, exciting times. We even developed a tool to track the evolution of openness called the Global Open Data Barometer. And, you know, this is very dear to me. As part of my work uh, in Uruguay, um, we, um, we developed this tool called Atu Servicio, which essentially is a tool that enables Uruguayans to uh, choose uh, service, health service providers in a more informed way. Uh, and this was done with great effort uh, in order to obtain curate and eventually release this data so people could make more informed choice. And to some degree, they did. But, you know, um, these things also helped for uh, policy makers to make better decisions and also help to have more informed policy debates. And the beauty of this is that the project is uh, still going on after all this time. And, and this, this is actually uh, great. But Unfortunately, this is not uh, normal business in, in other parts of the world. And to some degree, our evidence shows that in recent years, uh, openness has either progressed slowly, or in some cases stalled, or in worst case scenarios, we are actually facing uh, backlashes. And you know, amidst a global pandemic as the, wa as the one we are now enduring, it was also evident that our health systems were not uh, up to the task to provide timely and reliable data so we could monitor uh, our, the evolution of the pandemic and inform the public. 
Um, so that, uh, you know, it's part of the story. Uh, and also, you know, as the years went by, um, there are other challenges that um, emerge. Uh, for instance, the scandals involving several companies about the use of personal data. And personal data, you know, is a very useful uh, tool that could help to map entire populations that were not visible uh, to our public systems, but it could also, um, by making them visible, intentionally or unintentionally, could discriminate um, people. And further, the use of personal data could uh, lead to amplify this information or discrimination as the current COVID crisis shows. And data production and digitalization just keep actually advancing in the developing world. And with this, also the emergence of new tools such as um, machine learning, which is a branch of artificial intelligence. Uh, and it's helping us to automate uh, processes to predict uh, scenarios and potentially to categorize data in new and novel ways. And this is all great, but as this keeps advancing, data is becoming clearly a source of power, and with this power comes uh, great responsibility. So, in this context, a new challenge has emerged. How do we make sure that these technologies serve our societies, protect the dignity of our people, and also de deliver um, an inclusive future for all of us? And to some degree, I think the other question is, you know, does it matter at all? And in 2019, we actually asked this question to a group of experts through the State of Open Data publication of the Open Data for Development Network. And, you know, 65 movers and shakers of this environment decidedly said that um, it was important uh, that the use of data uh, was critical uh, to solve development challenge. Um, but, you know, today we are at a very critical point in where we are up to decide how that is going to be used. Uh, we are able to shape the evolution of the new and emerging data landscape. And this is the reason, actually, uh, that we are setting up the Data for Developing Network, or um, D4D <laughs> for short. Uh, and as part of this network, ILDE, my organization, is working with 19 partners um, to deliver the Global Data Barometer, or GDV uh, for short. A uh, small team uh, of um, organizations, a small team uh, basically, uh, led by my colleague Dr. Silvana Fumega and a group of uh, professionals based in the Global South, are collaborating with uh, 100 researchers uh, worldwide, gathering data and synthesizing evidence to help us understand um, how this is actually evolving. Um, and this is not a uh, uh, mean feat. Uh, it's uh, an Herculean task. Um, and to some degree, this new tool is going to help us to A, understand a bit more about uh, the use of open data, but beyond open data, we are going to be able to uh, understand the use of all types of data by uh, governments around the world. Uh, it will be also uh, useful to understand the capacity uh, we need um, to use data effectively. And finally, you know, it will help us to understand more about critical sectors such as um, land use, climate action, uh, contracts, public finance, uh, health, and uh, of course, uh, COVID-19, among the most critical challenges we, fi we face today. Um, you know, ultimately, uh, this is going to be useful uh, if the slide uh, if the slide passes, <laughs> there we go. Uh, and so, yes, as I was mentioning, all these uh, are our partners. Um, and ultimately, you know, if, um, if we are able to answer, this is going to be useful if we are going to answer a, a set of questions. So if we move to the next slide, 
if we move to the next slide, uh, we are going to be able to answer these questions. Which countries have the foundations in place for responsible and effective data collection and use? Which countries are ready not only to realize the benefits, but also to manage the risks of uh, the data transformation? Which countries are ensuring that high quality public data is available and usable? And which countries are making the most of their public data so resources? To some degree, um, these are very difficult questions and the barometer is going to be able to help us uh, benchmark a few of them and act as a foundation uh, for, um, for the field. And hopefully, uh, you know, all this information and methodology is also going to be open in ways uh, that people can not only access the data and evaluate uh, the data, but also understand how the analysis was done and hopefully contribute with their own analysis to foster collaboration. Uh, you know, measuring progress is, um, is difficult um, and for uh, some of us measuring progress is um, something we do uh, for a living. Uh, but, you know, because we want to provide the best available evidence um, to our communities and our governments. But it's not all, actually. Um, you know, measuring is just not enough. We need to do things. We need to act. And several civil society organizations um, are now arguing for a leaving no one behind developing perspective which is important because it means that if we don't get to map everyone, we, f whether for legal policy or uh, technical uh, restrictions, um, we are not going to be able to deliver uh, the resources and the needs for them. But consideration needs to be given that in this approach, uh, the visibility of these peoples could also affect them negatively. Um, as you know, in a way, a recent report but by the World Bank is calling for a new social contract on data. And, and yes, we think the Global Data Barometer, or GDB, is going to be able to hopefully inform this contract and help us to shape how this new social contract on data is going to look like. We definitely need more coordination. Uh, we need um, pioneering projects uh, trying to uh, understand um, how uh, this new data landscape is going to be. Uh, and this is all part of what the Data for uh, Development Network is set out to do. Uh, it's about research supporting uh, informed decision making, supporting international collaboration and supporting uh, new ways of thinking uh, around uh, the data challenges we face in the development sphere. Um, in a way, you know, D4D is trying to advance uh, the use of data to support a more inclusive uh, feminist and democratic development for all. Um, so this is us, uh, and, and you know, this is a bit of a pivotal moment in history. We are here uh, with the capacity still to shape the way data will be used to serve um, humanity. And potentially we could influence the lives of millions if we work um, together and if we develop the right tools and methodologies, but crucially the right actions as well. So our invitation is to work together to make sure that uh, we are going to have a future that is inclusive for all of us. And with this, I thank you very much. Muchas gracias desde Montevideo. And I hope that uh, we can continue this conversation through our Huba app or through our social networks. Have a good day, good evening, or good night. Hasta luego.